I went down below and the bilge pump was running. Opened up the engine and uh, there's water everywhere. If you've been following our route for the last three months, you'll know we've clocked up over 1,232 nautical miles, sailing from Kota Kinabalu in Sabah to our present anchorage at Bitung in the Lembe Strait, Sulawesi. That's a cool 2,282 kilometres. But this wasn't our original destination. Before the world shut down and we ended up stuck in Borneo for two years, we'd planned to sail to the Philippines. The reason we're now in Indonesia is simply that it was the first country to open its borders to sailboats on this side of the planet. So here we are with 60 days left on our visas and three possible destinations in front of us. 1. North to Davao in the Philippines. 2. East to Raja Ampat and Sarong. 3. Or South to the island of Lombok. Each destination has its pros and cons, but we need to evaluate them with two criteria in mind. Firstly, our number one objective to fly to the UK for the first time in four years to see family and friends. Secondly, we can only do this if we find somewhere safe to leave Esper. Raja Ampat is tempting, but our insurance provider will not cover us for leaving Esper at Sarong, so that's out. This leaves the Holiday Ocean View Resort and Marina in Davao or the Madana Bay Marina in Lombok. Davao is the right way, but it has no haul-out facilities and crucially, when we arrive back from our UK visit, we'll be stuck for months waiting for the winds to change. And then it'll take another season to get somewhere to haul out. Ongoing problems with the boat mean a haul-out is required sooner rather than later. Lombok, on the other hand, has haul-out facilities, but it's the furthest away along a remote and unpopular route with inconsistent wind, squalls, big seas and currents, all conspiring to make it a trying passage. There's never a good time to sail in these waters, but we have 60 days to get there. And if we take each step as it comes, with a careful eye on the weather and sea state, we reckon we should be able to make day hops and short trips for much of the passage. Lombok it is. Liz just said, are you not going to do a goodbye to Bitung video? And I said, of course I am. But uh, I've got to weigh the anchor, avoid a few shallow patches. And of course there's lots and lots of boats here at anchor, lots of commercial vessels, tankers, tows, tugs, and uh, anything else to begin with tea. So uh, yeah, we just pulled up, what, 80 metres of chain, which obviously had quite a bit of growth on it, so we had to spend a bit of time cleaning that up. But uh, yeah, the forecast is okay at the moment, although there does seem to be a bit of wind on the nose. Of course, what else would we expect, eh? But uh, yeah, it is time to say goodbye to Bitten after a wonderful time here. So uh, who knows, maybe we'll be back. We'd like to think so, because it is a marvellous place. I mean, of course, you can see the docks. It's very busy here. I guess this is a sort of launch point for Hong Kong and China. This is obviously well placed to service uh, those countries. So, uh, Bitung is a very busy port town. In fact, this port here is pretty significant in size, and when you compare it to the actual size of the town itself, as a consequence, of course, we've got lots of uh, commercial vessels at anchor, lots of fishing boats at anchor on uh, Lembe, all tied together. Uh, but perhaps the busiest bit of traffic you can see right now at this time in the morning are the little ferries taking the uh, school children from Lembay Island over to uh, the main town of Bitung itself. A bit of 1960s brutalism for you over my shoulder. 
sort of thing you'd expect to find in a uh, new town development shopping mall in the UK. local constabulary behind me just waking up having their breakfast waving us off and uh, we're going to be passing the last boat at anchor the last big ship at anchor which is actually out open in, in the open bay there and uh, this is the tail end of Lembe so here ends our story in Lembe and here begins the next part of our episode oh so long bitten one of the favorite places ever the diving made it because we've never seen anything quite like what we saw down there. We've made friends, loads of new critters, seen lots of new animals. I really do hope on this occasion that we do come back here because I don't think there's going to be anywhere like it again. But it wasn't just the diving, it was the people. We met some absolutely lovely people. I've got them on WhatsApp. I hope to remain friends with them for ages. I hope to return and see them again. There's something really special about these Sulawesi people, I don't know what it is, there's no sides to them, they're not out to get you in any way, they just want to be friends and to help and to enjoy life. So yeah, Bitung, Lembe Strait. Also, by the way, a very good anchorage if you're coming on your own boat, recommend it. Plenty of places to anchor. It's deep in the middle but there are places at the sides where you can easily find shelter. So goodbye Bitung. Sorry to see you go, but I know that we will come back. That is what I believe. <laughs> so we're now starting our thousand mile or so journey to Lombok. It's gonna be a very slow one. We've got 60 days before we have to leave the country. So we need to get to Lombok. We need to get to the marina, find somewhere where we can haul the boat and leave her safely while we head back to the UK and see parents and friends. 60 days, so first step on that vast journey is just a quick 30 odd mile hop down the coast. Pretty much a straight run down the coast. There's an open bay which we can anchor in, which actually would have protection with any southwesterlies that come up, which is what we're kind of expecting. Although the forecast does keep changing. The other night we've got some quite strong northeasterlies, which is very strange for this time of year. They are predicted to come in once again tonight. So who knows it's basically a case of get on with it and deal with whatever is thrown at us really of course all this coastline is completely unfamiliar to us so a lot of this is basically sort of sucking it and seeing as to where we can anchor so i wanted to get an idea of what the prevailing current or the uh, the waves or the swell was going to be i had no idea what that was going to be like and uh, and of course we've got this this crappy weather that came through that's created a bit of wind. I'm having to really come up with contingencies for every proposed anchorage. So the first anchorage was a bay just here, but taking into account this sort of rough easterly little swell it might be possible to anchor around the corner. But uh, yeah, it's all new. There's no anchor marks or anything on the charts, nothing like that. So it really is a case of getting there and seeing what it's like. Meanwhile, we've got some. It's a very beautiful countryside. It's quite different to the other side. It seems a lot uh, flatter. All the mountains seem to be on the other side. It almost looks like a golf course over there. Very green, looks manicured from a distance. Uh, not much else. There's been a few low line buildings, a couple of fishing boats out at sea, uh, but it's been a while until we've seen civilization. So there's a little village here, which was going to be our first anchorage. So uh, not so active on this side, but still very, very pretty. It was great to be moving again along a new coastline, particularly here in Sulawesi, where you're never far from dramatic peaks and forested valleys. Then Jamie spotted something wrong with the exhaust. It wasn't throwing out as much cooling water as it should and had turned distinctly white. So he nipped below, only to find the engine bay full of water and the bilge straining to keep up with a major leak. Phew, that was a bit exciting. Uh, so I walked to the back of the boat and the exhaust was not sounding right. So 
is why it's very important to know all the noises on your boat and you know when something doesn't sound right. So uh, I went down below and the bilge pump was running. I opened up the engine and uh, there was f***ing water everywhere. The engine bilge, which is separate to the boat bilge, had filled up and uh, the bilge behind it and the one behind that, which sort of variously feed in to both the boat and the engine bilges were full up and there was water gushing around everywhere. So um, anyway, it was the uh, siphon. So the raw water was brought into the boat and that raw water uh, goes around the uh, cooling system to cool down the fresh water, which cools your engine. And uh, in that pipe, there is a siphon. And obviously the siphon has a U-shaped uh, pipe and you have two hoses attached to each end of that and one of those hoses had come off so lost one of the clips completely come off don't even know where it is and uh, yeah that was pissing water so uh, got Liz on the case she uh, emptied the engine bilge fortunately it was just water and um, yeah clipped up the uh, the hose again I'm still not convinced it's 100% watertight but at the moment the exhaust sounds okay uh, the cooling seems to be okay and uh, we are probably what seven miles away from our anchorage so i think when we drop the hook i'll have a proper look at it but uh, it's enough excitement for one day i think a little tricky navigating around here there are entire islands missing from the charts which makes you wonder how true are the charts because we're 146 meters of water here and we're aiming for 10 to 5 meters over there i just hope that it's there when we get there well we've dropped hook and uh, it's an interesting one i said earlier the charts are lying and we did actually drop the hook in about 10, 11 meters, which is on the charts, but the charts reckon this whole area is 10, 11 meters. It's not, it's a tiny little patch, which you can just about pick up on satellite. Otherwise it's 40 meters. And the only other bit that's shallow is there's a channel that goes back out towards the bay north of here. And again, um, well, it dropped away very quickly. So 40 meters down to, you know, less than 10 meters very quickly. So the disadvantage with that place over there is if we'd anchored there and we'd spun around, we could be facing the wrong way. But at least here, if the anchor drags or anything happens, we are surrounded by deep water. But um, yeah, the, the, the main issue is that there's quite a bit of current and Esper's bobbing around a bit. We are now sitting in 30 metres, having only put out how many metres? 50. It's only 50. Yeah, because we were anchoring in 10 or 12. So, uh, yes. Hmm. I was just commenting to Liz on how beautiful and stark the uh, coastline looks and she said yeah look at it that way. And I said um, try not to look that way but we knew, we knew this uh, weather was going to come in, it was predicted and this is why we've actually stuck round to the south of this island because all the weather is coming uh, unusually from the northeast. and uh, I think hopefully that will be the last of it for a couple of days at least. But. Um, we seem to be sitting okay on this funny tiny little patch of 10 meters even though the boat itself is back down in 30 meters and uh, waving to the odd fishermen as they go past um, yeah it's a it's a nice interesting little spot it's quite different to anything we've anchored in before obviously on the north side all the anchorages we were choosing were quite a few of them were known anchorages and they were all sort of tucked behind things whereas here we're a little bit more exposed that's looking east so were that weather to be relentless throughout the night, we'd probably get fetch as well. But as it is, anything we're really contending with is uh, current. And I've just looked at the screen and realized how bloody dark it is. There's lots of lightning going on, rumbles of thunder, but um, yeah, we're uh, just gonna take it easy. And uh, I think it's about 40 miles tomorrow. Strange anchorage, very strange. <laughs> 